In this video, we will look at Venn diagrams. So we're still dealing with sets. We have what we call the universal set. It's the set that includes everything that we want to look at, and that'll make a little more sense what we, once we start getting into some examples. But usually in a Venn diagram, the universal set is represented by everything in this box. We call it U. A circle in a Venn diagram represents some set S that's inside of U. And S prime, S with a little apostrophe over it right here, that is denoting the complement of S. It consists of all the members of U that aren't inside S. So in our Venn diagram, where would S prime be? In the circle? No. In the circle is set S. We want everything not in that. So S prime would be outside here. In set notation, S prime is equal to the set of X's where X is an element of U, but X is not an element of S. Now we talked about subsets. Consider two sets A and B. A is a subset of B, written with this notation here, if every element of A is also in B, and we'll do with some examples here to help make a little more sense of this. So the question is, is A a subset of B? So A consists of 2, 3, and 5. If all of those three elements are in B, A is a subset of it. So first we look for 2. There's 2. Is 3 in B also? Yes, it is. And is 5 in B also? Yeah, it is. So A is a subset of B. A is a part of it, in other words. Now, is C a subset of B? C contains 3, 5, but 8 is not in B. And since all of C is not inside B, C is not a subset of B. It shares some elements, but not all of them. There's a special set called the empty set, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a set with nothing in it. There's two ways to show that right here, and I prefer the little z O or the zero with the line through it. Less, less to write than a set of squiggly brackets, in my opinion. So, some examples. U is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we have set E. List set E prime and illustrate E and E prime on a Venn diagram and then find the number of things in these three sets. Okay, so a variety of different ways to go at this. Um, so E contains two, three, five, and seven. Note that E is a subset of U. Sets within the universal set will always be subsets. So what's not in there? Well, E prime going to equal the set of everything else, 0, 1, 4, and 6. And we actually have enough information now to write the answers to A, B, and C. Number of sets in, number of elements in E is 1, 2, 3, 4. Number of elements not in E, the complement of E, is 4. And the number of elements in our universal set, there are 8 of them. And then it says to make a Venn diagram. So here's a box representing our universal set. This circle is E. What goes inside it? 2, 3, 5, and 7. And outside of it goes 0, 1, 4, and 6. There's a Venn diagram showing the universal set, all the elements, and E inside of it. So now we want to illustrate these numbers on a Venn diagram. And what you have to understand for this one is how those number sets that we looked at can fit into a Venn diagram. This universal set is all the reals. The smallest set of numbers was our natural number.
And then after that came our integers. And then after that came our rational numbers. And then irrational numbers don't fit inside of that. But natural numbers are a subset of the integers, which is a subset of the rational numbers, which is a subset of the real numbers. And the complement of the rational numbers, q prime, is equal to the irrationals. So where are these numbers going to fit? Where is the best spot for them to go? Square root of 3, that is an irrational number. That's going to have to go floating outside here. 8 and a half, is that a natural number? No. Is it an integer? No. Is it a rational number? Yes. Negative 2, that's going to be a few integers. Not a natural number, but it is an integer. 16, those are here, it's a natural number. 7.1, that is a rational number. 7.1 could be written as a fraction, as can 0.115. So here is these numbers on the Venn diagram. And it's important to note how these sets are subsets of each other. All of them are subsets of the real numbers. The real numbers are natural numbers are subsets of the rational numbers. Pay attention to that. It's a useful thing to know. So now we have set notation for a universal set. We've got A and we've got B. We have two subsets of our universal. So we're going to start with a box representing everything that we can have. And what does this mean? 0 to 12, where x is an element of the integers. Okay, so 0, 1, 2, 3 yada, 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 all the way up to 12. That's what that set notation means. So I'm going to have one circle for A, and one circle for B. But notice, there's a couple numbers, 3 and 7, that show up in both of these. So what we can do, what we need to do, is we need to have our circles overlap each other. So there's one circle, and there's another circle. Because in this problem, 3 and 7 belong to both set A and set B. So we've got the 3, we've got the 7 out of both. Now in the set A, we need 2, we need 5, and we need 11. Those are only in set A, not also in set B. In set B, exclusively set B, 1, 6, and 8. Now that's everything in set A and set B, but what's left over? What's not in A or B? I'm missing a 0. So 0 goes out here. I've got 1, 2, 3, no, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I don't have a 9, a 10, or a 12. So here we go, another Venn diagram. S is 2, 4, 6, and 7. We have a universal set consisting of all the X's where X is less than 10 and x is an element of the positive integers. So positive integers. One thing to know here is 0 doesn't count. 0 is not positive. This is just 1, 2, yada, 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 up to 10. Here's set s. Universal set. Inside S goes 2, 4, 6, and 7 floating around in there. What still isn't in S that should be in U? We need 1, 3, 5, 
Um, and so it doesn't matter where you put these. They're just floating around in this sector. So the complement of S, S prime, that's going to equal 1, 3, 5, 